Hi all, so today we're going to be looking at filling in chapter 9.1 in our notes, okay? So we've got a few questions where we're going to have to fill in and get solutions to these questions. All things we have been practicing uh, regarding factorising quadratic expressions and solving the equations, okay, to find the roots. One thing that we will look at also is how this can come up in exam style questions, okay? Well, that'll be the last example, okay? So the first thing is... We can only do this when it's written in this form here. So we've got everything over to the left hand side and it equals zero, okay, which we have been practicing, okay. So our job is to factorise the left hand side, set each bracket or factor equal to zero, and then solve the resulting equations to find the roots, okay. So things we have been practicing lately, okay. So we're going to come down to these first three questions here, okay, and all these are trinomials. However, you'll notice this last one here. A little bit more trickier because we've got a coefficient in front of the x squared term, okay? So that is the harder case, okay? So we'll start off over here on the left-hand side, the first example. So the first one is my product has to be positive 56. Okay, so it's going to have to be positive 56 there. And my sum has to be the term in front of the y coefficient, okay? So it's going to be negative 15 there. Okay, so we're going to create our table now to see if we can find our values that would give us these things. Okay, so I know 7 times 8 would quickly give me 56. Okay, if I multiply them, if I add 7 and 8, I get positive 15. Okay, so not quite what we want, but it's close. Therefore, if I just make them both negative, that would still keep my product positive. But if I then added them, it would now give me negative 15. Okay, so that is... The two numbers that I'm going to be using, okay, I'm going to be using negative 7 and negative 8 here, okay. So that gives me my bracket, okay, so I'm just going to scroll down the page to give myself some more space. Okay, so that gives me my bracket, okay, so my two terms in my bracket, so it's going to be x minus 7. Now, it's not going to be x, my apologies, it's going to be y for this question, because it was a y question, okay, so it's going to be y minus 7 and y minus 8 equal to zero okay and we know at this point what we do is we split these up okay we do one at a time so we get y minus seven equals zero and i've got y minus eight equals zero okay taking the negative seven over to the other side i get y equals seven so that's one answer taking the negative eight over to the other side i get y equals eight as my other answer there okay so there it is written on there okay so that is how we would solve for y in both cases there, okay? So we factorised it, and then we split the brackets up and solved the equations. Okay, we'll do the same on the top, uh, uh, second equation now, sorry. You'll see here, we do have everything on the left-hand side, however, it'd be beneficial for us to have it in terms of the highest power, okay? So I'm just going to write that as m squared minus 12 lots of m plus 27, okay? And that equals zero, okay? So I've got my equation written in the form I want, okay? So my sum has to be the last term, not the sum, sorry, my apologies. The product has to be the last term. Let's try that again. So my product has to equal positive 27, and my sum has to be the coefficient in front of the m, which is negative 12, okay? Now, we create our table. Okay, so quickly I can say 3 times 9 would give me 27 if I multiply them, okay, and if I added 3 and 9, I would get the answer of positive 12. Not quite what we want, we want negative 12, so if I try them both as negative numbers now, okay, so negative 3 times negative 9 does add to give me negative 12. If I multiply them to a stays positive 27, so that's good, so I found the two numbers that I am looking for, okay, so my two numbers, that's going to be my brackets, are negative 3 and negative 9. Okay, so if I write my brackets out now, okay, so remember I'm using m's this time, okay, so it's going to be m minus 3 multiplied by m minus 9, that equals 0. Okay, we're going to split them up, okay, so that I can work out the value of these one at a time. Okay, so if I have m minus 3 equals 0, then if I take that negative 3 on the other side, it becomes positive 3 there. And same with the, this bracket here, if I take the 9 over, 
I get positive 9. Okay, folks, so that's another example, like the first one, where I have solved and I've worked out my two values that would solve that equation. Okay, now we're going to go on the last question, and again, works very similar, however, we just have a bit more work to do because of the coefficient in the front. Okay, so if we remember, the product is affected by both the number in the front now and the last term. So if we multiply 2 times 3, so my product becomes 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so that is the key part to get started. Sum is still the same, it's on the middle term, which is negative 7. Okay, and we are now going to work this out. Now, this is a bit like the last two examples regarding I've got to make a product positive and my sum negative. I've noticed that two negative numbers do that. So if I work out negative 1, uh, sorry, negative 1, sorry, yeah, that's right, and uh, times negative 6, that would add together to give me negative 7, which is what I want and they would keep the product positive. So I found my two numbers there. Now when it's in this situation, they don't go straight into brackets. What we have to do is split our question up. Okay, so my question said at the start it was 2x squared. It was then minus 7x, but we split the minus 7 up as in minus 1x and minus 6x. Okay, and we're left with plus 3 on the end. Okay, then what we do is we take it two terms at a time. Okay, so I'm going to take these first two terms here. I'm going to see if I can take a common factor out. The only common factor out I can take is an x, so I'm going to be left with 2x minus 1 there. Okay, if I take an x out of both of them, and if I look at the next two terms, okay, so it was the negative 6x and the 3, okay, now I'm actually going to take negative 3 out here because I want the other bracket to look like the first bracket we've got, okay, so if I'm careful with what I choose here, if I take negative 3 out of both of them, if I take negative 3 out of this, I'm left with 2 lots of x, and if I take negative, so 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1, okay, and that's still equals 0 on that far side. My two brackets, well, how I get both my brackets, you'll notice I've got the same bracket twice now. So my first bracket is the terms in front of each. So it's x minus 3, x in front of the first bracket, 3, negative 3 in front of the second one, and 2x minus 1 there. Okay. Now what I do, I split them up like how I've been doing. So I've got x minus 3 equals 0, therefore I get x equals 3. I then have 2x minus 1 equals 0. Take the 1 over. So that becomes positive 1, divide by 2, I get x equals a half there. Okay, so a bit trickier example because the trinomial is trickier, however, the process is the same what we're trying to achieve. Okay, we're now going to look at these questions here. We're only going to look at the first two. You don't need to do the last example that's in your notes for 9.1 uh, part b. We just got a bit of extra work to do to start with. Okay, so you'll see here I don't have it in the correct way I want it, so I need to bring that 24 over to the other side. So if I take away 24, I get minus 24 on that side there, okay? And now it's ready to go, okay? Again, trinomial, so we are factorising it. That's going to be my product, so my product's going to be negative 24. My sum, that's going to be the term in front of the x, so it's going to be negative 5, okay? We'll quicken this up now a bit because I'm sure you're getting used to these processes, okay? So two numbers that would multiply to give me negative 24 and add to give me negative 5. Okay, there's a few options, okay. You find the one that works as negative 8 times by 3. Okay, that would add to give you negative 5, which means that's the right one there. Okay, so I'm going to be using negative 8 and 3. Okay, so they go into my bracket. So, okay, so I'm going to have x with minus 8, x with positive 3. That equals 0. Split them up one at a time, so I get x minus 8 equals 0. x would equal 8. And I have x minus 3 equals 0. That gives me... Sorry, x plus 3 equals 0, so that gives me x minus 3. Okay, so I've got my two answers there. Okay, so you'll see another example, very similar to the ones in uh, part A, just we had to rearrange our equation. Okay, and you'll see, second example, we've got the same. So I'm going to multiply out my brackets first of all. That gives me x squared minus 3x equals 4. I then want to bring the 4 over. 
So I have got that there. Okay, so I am now ready to go and do my product and sum again. Okay, so product's going to be oh wrong one, Mr. Rain. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. So my product is my last term. Okay, so I'm going to write product is negative four. And um, my sum will be the middle term, which is negative 3. Okay, so it's going to be negative 3. And that would be the start of my table. Okay, right, two numbers to give me negative 4 if I multiply them, and to give me a sum of negative 3. Okay, so you'll find the one that works is when it's negative 4 times by, neg uh, by 1, sorry, I should say. Okay, so negative 4 times 1. Okay, and if I add them, I do get negative 3. So the two numbers that I'll be using, negative 4 and 1. Okay, so get my two brackets ready. Okay, I'm going to have x minus 4 and x plus 1. That now equals 0. Do a split. So I've got x minus 4 equals 0 x would equal 4. Okay, we should be getting quite familiar with this process now. Oh, jumped a wee step a bit ahead of myself there. Let's try that again. So I've got x plus 1 equals 0. x equals negative 1. Okay, so that's me found the answers to them. Okay, so there's ones we just had to do a bit of rearranging. Okay, miss out the next example. We don't need to do that one. And miss out the first one in part C. We're going to go straight to this rectangular one. Okay, so... What we have here is a bit of an exam style question, okay? It's how to use this in practice, okay? So rectangular long, x plus 2 metres long, and x minus 1 metres wide, okay? We've got that there. The area of the lawn is 40 square centimetres, okay? So what I would do, first of all, is just write that in there. That's 40 centimetres squared. We want to show that that picture represents this here, okay? x squared minus... A plus x minus 42 okay so that's what we want to show right well this is problem solving okay the only thing I know about the area of a rectangle okay well area is length times breadth now the length okay it doesn't matter exactly how which one you do okay but if we do the length being across the way and the breadth up and down the way so it's going to be x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 1. That is what that means there, okay? So if we multiply these out, okay, so I'll split the first bracket, so that becomes x with x minus 1, plus 2 lots of x minus 1. That gives me x squared minus an x there, plus 2 lots of x minus 2. So I've got x squared minus an x plus 2 lots of x, that gives me 1x positive minus 2 there. Okay, so that's the area, okay, if I use algebra. The area is also 40 centimetres squared, so I know that x squared plus x minus 2 had to equal 40. Okay, that's what the area of the lawn was. If I bring that 40 over, so if I take 40 off both sides, I get x squared plus x, negative 2, take away 40, it's minus 42. And I've got zero on the other side. So that's me showing that I get this quadratic, okay? Bit of fact, bit of multiplying the brackets to get what the area would have been as an expression, okay? x squared plus x minus 2. I knew that I had to equal 40. Then I just rearranged it to get it on everything on one side, okay? So our job is to find the length of the lawn, okay? So what we're going to do is we need to find the value of x to work out the lengths here, okay? I need to solve that equation that I have just worked out. So my job, my task here is to solve this here. Okay, so again, what we do is we have a product and sum table, okay, because it's a trinomial. So we've got a product, that's going to equal negative 42. I then have a sum. Now be careful here, folks, okay, because my sum is actually the number in front of the x there, which is positive 1. Okay, so just be a bit wary of that. Okay, that happens quite a lot. So my product was negative 42. I forgot to highlight that there. Right, we're going to solve this. Okay, so two numbers that multiply to give me negative 42 and add to give me 1. Well, I can let you go through all the examples, but the number 
that works is negative 6 times 7, that gives me negative 42. And if I add negative 6 and 7, I get positive 1. So that's the two numbers that you should have found there. Okay. So what my brackets become, okay, I'll do this on this side, it's going to be x minus 6 and x plus 7, that equals 0. We factorise and we solve each of them, so we get x minus 6 equals 0. And take the 6 over the other side, I get positive 6. I've got x plus 7 equals 0. Take the 7 over, I get x equals negative 7 over there. Now, in maths, one answer is going to get us this. Okay, so our job was to find the length of the lawn. And our length of the lawn are given by the dimensions x plus 2 and x minus 1. Now, we've actually got two possible cases here. We've got the results when x is 6, that was our first answer, or when x is negative 7. Now, if we think about this, if x was negative 7, that length there would be negative 7 take away 1, which is negative 8. And that would not make sense. You don't get a length of negative 8. Okay, so what we can do is we can rule out this answer here. Okay, that would not help us with our question. So we're going to rule that out. You still show that was a possible answer to the equation. However, we're going to rule that one out because that is not going to help us find the length of the law. Okay, we need to use x equals 6 because that's going to give us positive dimensions okay so when x equals 6 okay so when x equals 6 we have a lawn that is x plus 2 along the length and x minus 1 okay so it's going to be x plus 2 there and x minus 1 there that would give me a lawn, in fact I won't do it, I'll do it underneath to give myself a bit more space. That would give me a lawn, if I put x equals 6 into here, I would get a lawn of 6 plus 2 oh, and 6 minus 1. That would give me a lawn of 8 and 5. Okay, so I've worked out the lengths of the lawn. Okay, so there's an example that could come up in a past paper question. Okay, that is how these questions can come up. Okay, a sort of algebraic expression that you need to create. We then solve the quadratic, get our two values, work out which value would be the one that's going to help us answer the question, and then we write down what our answers are using the value that we found. Okay, folks, so I'll get you to fill that in, then I'll get you to try some questions based on that. Okay, folks, thank you.